Hello Grade 11, welcome to our Physical Science class. Today, you will learn about the polarity of molecules. We will try to understand the difference between the two types of molecules according to polarity, the polar molecules and the non-polar molecules. At the end of this video, you should be able to determine if a molecule is polar or non-polar. For today's lesson, let's do this single experiment first. We will observe how water and dishwashing liquid behave when they are mixed with a cooking oil. To do this, we will be needing a water, a cooking oil, a dishwashing liquid, and a steering rod. Let's do it! First, ilagay natin ang tubig at ang cooking oil sa loob ng test tube. Then, mix. What do you notice? Ang tubig at ang mantika kailanman ay hindi magmimix. Now, let's try the dishwashing liquid and the cooking oil. Let's see. Yun. Kung makikita mo, nagkahalo sila. Sa simple experiment na yan, malalaman mo na hindi ka pwedeng maghugas ng masayang pinggan gamit ang tubig lang. Mangangailangan ka ng dishwashing liquid kasi hindi nagdi-dissolve ang oil sa water. Pero bakit? Yan ang pag-aaralan natin sa video ito. Polarity happens when there is equal or unequal sharing of electrons among the atoms of a molecule. In the case of water and oil, they will never mix because water is a polar molecule while oil is a non-polar molecule. Now let's take a closer look at how these two types of molecules differ. A molecule is said to be polar when there is unequal or asymmetrical distribution of electrons. What does this mean? Water, for example, is a molecule composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. If we are going to draw the molecular structure of oxygen atom, you will notice that it has only six electrons in its outermost shell. We call this the valence electron. As discussed when you were in grade 9, octet rule states that atoms tend to gain share or transfer electrons in order to attain a complete set of valence electron configuration. Therefore, oxygen needs two more electrons to become stable. Hydrogen, however, is an exemption to the rule since it has only one electron in its shell. To become stable, hydrogen needs one more electron. Ngayon, dahil parang silang nangangailangan ng electrons para maging stable, they will share electrons with each other. Oxygen will share its electron to hydrogen and hydrogen to oxygen forming water molecule. Oxygen now has 8 electrons and hydrogen has 2 making each atom stable. Now, this relative ability of an atom to draw electrons in a bond toward itself is called electronegativity of the atom. Dahil mas marami or denser ang electrons ng oxygen compared to hydrogen, nagiging mas mataas ang kanyang electronegativity o ang kanyang kakayahang mag-attract ng electrons, giving it a partial negative charge. On the other side, hydrogen has a lower electronegativity kaya nagkakaroon naman siya ng partial positive charge. This unequal sharing of electrons between atoms creates a dipole moment or two poles, the positive and the negative. We will represent this with, a, with an arrow pointing towards oxygen since oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. The sharing of electrons by two atoms may be likened to a tug of war between two men. The stronger man drags the other across a central line. 
Between atoms, the shared electron pair is attracted more strongly toward the negative atom making them unequal or asymmetrical, creating a polar band. Nonpolar molecules, however, are formed when there is equal or symmetrical distribution of electrons. This happens when the bonding atoms have approximately equal ability to attract electron on each side. Let's have oxygen gas, O2, as an example. As we had discussed earlier, oxygen has six valence electrons. So, when two oxygen atoms with the same electron negativity combine, what will happen? As you can see, the electron density is spread evenly between the two atoms in the band. Since a pair of electrons is shared equally between atoms, there is no partial charge created. Hence, no dipole moment. Therefore, oxygen gas is a nonpolar molecule. We can also determine the polarity of molecules based on the electron negativity difference between the atoms present in a molecule. To get the electron negativity value of each element, we will use a periodic table. There you can see the electron negativity value of each element. Electronegativity value increases from left to right, which means that nonmetals are more electronegative than metals. In the table, you can see that oxygen and fluorine have the highest electronegativity value. So we have to remember this band range. If the electronegativity difference range from 0 to 0 0.4, the type of band is nonpolar covalent. 0.5 to 2.0, it is a polar covalent bond. And when the value is 2.1 above, the molecule is in an ionic bond. Now, let's use again water as an example. The electronegativity value of hydrogen is 2.1 and oxygen is 3.5. To get the electronegativity difference, we simply subtract 2.1 from 3.5. This becomes 1.4. So since the value is 1.4 and is within the 0.5 to 2.0 band range, water is polar. The greater the difference between the electronegativity of the atoms involved in the band, the greater is the polarity of the molecule. For the oxygen gas, O2, the electronegativity value of oxygen is 3.5, therefore 3.5 minus 3.5 is 0. So this is within the band range of 0 to 0 0.4, which means that oxygen is a nonpolar covalent. That simple. However, the polarity of molecules do not depend solely on the type of band present, but also on the shape of the molecules. This means that there are molecules who are polar in bonding, but is actually a nonpolar molecule based on the shape of the molecules. Maybe you're now wondering how it happened. Let's use carbon dioxide as an example. Carbon has four electrons and oxygen has six. So carbon needs four and oxygen needs two to become stable. Therefore, the two oxygen atom will share its electrons to carbon, making them stable. Since oxygen is denser, it gains a partial negative charge and carbon a partial positive charge, making it a polar molecule. In terms of the electronegativity, the electronegativity value of oxygen is 3.5 and carbon is 2.5, giving them an electronegativity difference of 1.0, making the molecule a polar band. However, based on the molecular geometry or the shape of the molecules, carbon dioxide is a linear molecule, making it a nonpolar molecule. We will discuss this topic about molecular geometry or the shape of the molecules in our next video. And that ends our lesson. I hope you learned something today. Thank you for watching.